Greetings, friend. I will show you how the world Sudoku champion, Tan Tan Dai, solved this classic Sudoku in less than 90 seconds during a playoff round. I watched her solve in slow motion just so I could explain to you every mark and solved cell, including the brilliant technique she used to solve the green cell. I'll also give you positive video moments to help you solve along with the world champion. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. Okay, we're going to start off with a pause the video moment. As soon as Tantan -tan flipped the page and saw this puzzle, she solved this cell, row two, column one, first. So pause the video and see if you can solve this cell while I give you a few seconds. Congratulations if you did it. I am impressed. It is not the first cell I would look to solve here. Those of you who just want to enjoy the show, what Tantan -tan noticed immediately was she looked across row two, saw this eight and one, and knew that they're a hidden pair. So the eight and one had to be in these two cells, and then must have seen the eight down there, because this cell is actually a one. And congratulations if you saw it. I thought that was quite sick to be able to solve that right away. And then, of course, this theory is confirmed because the next cell she saw was the eight right here in row two. Welcome to Smart Hobbies. If you are new to the channel, please subscribe and ring the bell for notifications if you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby. Then Tan Tan looked across these three cells, saw that it was a 279. You got the 9 and 7 right there. So she saw this for 2, and she put a 7, 9 here. And what's interesting, she did markings, and what she would write is right in between the two cells. She'd write 7, 9. And so if she could solve one of the cells, she'd just write it in there. And she pretty much just wrote over her marks. She never did any erasing. Uh, I thought that was interesting. That's not how I do paper and pencil solving, so I'm learning some new, quicker techniques here. Okay, after writing over the line, she then looked over for the twos and saw all these twos. There's only one place for two in block four. And then saw with these twos, two possibilities for two here. So she wrote a two like right here in the middle. And this is called Snyder notation, but she actually did an abbreviated form of that. Anytime you have two possibilities for a candidate in a block, you can mark it. And in case you saw one of these cells, you can solve the other right away. So her version is to write a two kind of right in the middle between those two lines. And then she went to this cell and marked that as a four, six. So I think she was looking for some restrictions to help with the solving. Uh, and then went down here and was able to see that this was indeed a naked single because you have the three, five, seven, eight, nine in the column. And then you have a two, four, six here in the row. So that can only be a one. And she went across row eight here and saw the restriction of the three, five. And this is important. This three, five is very important because it puts a lot of pressure, not only in the block, but on the columns that affect it as well, because it leads us up to our next pause the video moment. Pause the video and using your knowledge of this three, five, solve the green cell. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spotted this. What you know is that a naked pair like a 3-5 also acts as a claiming pair, which means that a 5 cannot be in either one of those cells. A 3 can't either. And since you have a 5 that covers this cell, the only place for a 5 in column 4 is right here. So that is a 5. Very hard to spot. Very impressed that she saw that quickly. Claiming pairs are pretty tough to spot and take advantage of. I do cover claiming pairs and the other top strategies you need to know to solve championship Sudoku in my solving guide. I also put in their definitions, diagrams, and solving links. Click on the pinned comment to download it for free. What she did next is she did a three, four, six naked triple. And instead of putting it in the block and covering up where marks would be, she actually writes it right above the grid. So she wrote it like right here between the five and the six, I guess letting her know that it was in these two columns. Uh, very interesting, I thought, that she did that. And then she goes over here into block one and she marks two spots for an eight. This is the only mistake I saw in the whole solve. Because you have an eight right there, you can actually solve for the eight. Uh, I think she just missed that, but she puts eights there, I think, because she saw that these two eights limited the eights in the column two. And then she 
make some marks here for the force because you see you have these two four so she's obviously kind of looking down this area and so she wrote a four like right there in the middle and she came over here and put a three six so looking for some restrictions there bvc restrictions she's not really doing a lot of the snyder marking but this reminds me of how mark goodlift solves he, if he sees a bye value cell he'll put something there knowing that it's close to being able to solve that cell and this does lead us up to our next pause the video moment okay the next thing that Tantan -tan looks at is in column four. So pause the video and see if you can spot a naked pair in column four while I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations if you spot it. You're taking advantage of this naked pair that acts as a claim pair. For those of you who just want to enjoy the show, because it's three, five, six, seven, and then the two, four, eight, five, these two cells can only be a one or a nine so that's a one nine naked pair and now one nine can't be anywhere else along this column and so what you have left is a three and a seven so santan sees that and she solves the three solves the seven and then solves that nine right away and then because she put the three there she's actually able to solve the six i thought that was pretty uh, neat that she looked at three six and then was able to solve it quickly then she put some ones in block five uh, then she puts this 5-8 right here. I think she starts focusing now on column 6 and looking for restrictions because then she puts the 4-8 down there, row 9, column 6. And then she writes 2-4-8 down here because you have that, the 3-5 here, you have the 1-9 here. And so she writes 2-4-8. So I'm just going to mark 2-4-8 to help us keep track of that. Then she comes up here and puts a 3-4 in the block. Remember, the 3-4-6 was actually written above it. Uh, she marks some fives in block one, and then she marks ones in block four, and then ones in block seven. So these ones act as a pointing pair because they're restricted to column two in block four. They can't be anywhere else outside that block. And so she knows these are the only two spots for a one. And then she sees that she has this three and this three, and she's able to solve for three in block four, which displaces that Snyder one. And then that allows her to solve for the one right here in block five. And then she puts a five eight right there. And this is kind of interesting. She kind of already knows that what this cell is gonna be. And I think maybe she saw this eight and five and said, okay, this has gotta be a five eight hidden pair, but she already knows she can solve that for a seven. Like I would have maybe looked for this cell first and then Mark that right there. Very cool. But after marking that seven, she then sees these two sixes and solves for the six in block six, and then comes back and solves for the eight right here. And the reason we can solve for the eight is she must have seen this eight and going, okay, can't be in any of these three cells. Only place for an eight in row five, which allows us to immediately disambiguate and solve for that five here. And then she works on and finishes row four. So this brings us up to the next pause the video moment. Pause the video and finish row four while I give you a few seconds. Okay, congratulations. If you spotted that, you're taking advantage of seeing the digits that are in the columns here. Those of you who want to enjoy the show, because of this seven, the only place for a seven in row four is right here. And then you can finish up the row with an eight. After doing the eight, she puts a two, four right here to do a two, four naked pair. Then she goes over here to the end and immediately solves this for a nine, the only candidate left in row six. Just places that Snyder four, she puts the four in there. And then she puts the five, seven to finish block four. It's a really good economy here. Like I normally would write five, seven, five, seven. She's just writing five, seven right there in the middle. And when she solves, there's no erasing. I've got to implement this in my paper pencil solving. And then she actually goes up here and she marks an eight. She writes an eight out here to the left of block one. Why do you think she did that? I don't know, but let me know in the comments. I would love to hear from you on why she might do that. Because our next mark is to go over here and put in the two, four in row one, column nine. And then she puts two, four right there. Because I guess she saw the eight there. And then immediately goes, oh, okay, I can solve for the eight because there's only one place for the eight in block eight. And she uses that 
to also notice that she has this five right there so she can solve this five and solve for three and block eight and then she comes on up and goes oh yep i can solve that for a four and she cleans up and puts the three sixes here in block one after doing that she marks the fours in block three and then she writes a two up here just to the right of block three i would love to figure out why she was writing stuff like a two maybe that was the candidate she was focusing on i don't know but again she's only like 30 40 seconds maybe 40 45 seconds into the solve at this point and doing great but what she does next is since she saw that four she actually solves for the two right there and then she solves for the four to finish column nine and then she comes back up to block three and finishes it all off so this brings us up to our next pause the video moment pause the video and finish the rest of block three. Well, I'll give you a few seconds. Congratulations, if you did it, you are becoming an expert solver like the world champion. Those of you who wanna enjoy the show, with this one and this one, you can solve for one right here. And then with this nine, only one place for a nine, which is right here, this place is a Snyder four. And then your last digit is a six. She put all those in that order then she comes over, disambiguates the three six here. You notice how she likes to clean up those marks. I'm a big fan of that. And at this point, she's at one minute and 15 seconds into the solve. And Tantan died. She had been very close to winning in previous years. This is the first year where she got in the lead and actually kept it all the way to the end. This is her first Sudoku championship. So she does the rest of these solves in, believe it or not, 13 seconds. Okay, less than 90 seconds. She only needs 13 to do it. So how does she do it? Well, she comes over here and notices that she needs a three or a five right there. She's got the three here. So she marks the five and then the three. And then she gets that eight, knocks that out. And then she comes down and goes, okay, I got the seven, five right here because of the five already marked. And then she works her way on up here. She needs a seven, nine. So she uses the knowledge that that's a nine. She put the seven and nine to finish block one. I like how she's kind of doing these two uh, digit solves, two cell solves, and works her way down. And then she comes down here into block seven. Notice there's only one digit left in column two. She solves a nine there. See, she needs a one seven here. Here's your seven. So she has the seven there and the one there, and then disambiguates the one nine in block eight. After doing one nine in block eight, she comes over here and solves the three in the corner. Boom, boom, boom. And then the other solve is a five. After doing the five, she then sees that she can do the four and the two because of this four. So she gets the four and the two to finish block eight. She comes over here in the block nine, gets the eight, the two right there. And then with this two, solves a two and a four right there and realizes she needs a five and a six. So she solves a five and the last digit is a six in one minute and 28 seconds completely unbelievable i loved watching that solve and how fast she went she never spent more than about three or four seconds in between marking or solving so watch this next video to see how a different sudoku world champion solves classic sudokus i hope these tips help you solve sudoku even faster and i want to thank you so much for watching